Hey, welcome everybody to our midweek update. And man, it looks like this is coming. So I want to encourage you to make sure that you get ready. Let's think about this. Here in the United States, we once looked at the persecution of Christians as something that happened a long time ago or in some distant land. Uh, that was in the first century or that was in the dark ages or that's only in China or Iran or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, in a sense, however, there's always been some type of persecution here in, in school. Students have often been bullied or belittled for their faith uh, by teachers or even more than their fellow students. Uh, Christians in the workplace sometimes suffered from harassment or were passed over for a promotion. That's called soft persecution. The times are changing, and they're changing fast. For the first time in American history, government shut down churches. And if they did gather together, they were told that they couldn't sing. Uh, those with religious objections to the government's prescribed medical treatment were hounded and punished. They sometimes lost their jobs and sometimes their careers. And the walls are closing in. A recent Newsweek poll found that the majority of Americans aged 25 to 34 believe that misgendering should be a crime. Uh, Christians love the truth, and the truth is that all individuals' gender is sex he or she was born with. That's what science says, and that's what common sense says. But now you are risking jail for stating the obvious, that God made them male and female. And this past weekend, we look at what happened at the White House over Resurrection Sunday or Easter Sunday, and also in New York and other places. And we're going to look at this in just a second because, friends, this isn't an accident. It's not an accident over what happened over this past weekend on Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, what our government is doing. Uh, listen, we're going to look at that in just a minute because I really believe we need to pay attention to what's going on, uh, be very aware of it, and also be prepared for what appears to be rapidly coming. And then towards the end, I'll give you six things that we can do to strengthen ourselves at the same time. Hey, listen, before we go there, just a couple of quick things. One of them is if you're in the Buena Park area of Southern California this weekend, I'll be speaking with Alex Newman at the Eagle Forum Summit. You can check it out on the Hope for Our Times website. And also, I want to encourage you, this is free, to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Uh, it might not mean much to you guys, but it really does mean a lot to us. Uh, it just helps with the algorithms to be able to get the word out. And then also, I want to thank all of you who support us. And without your support, uh, we couldn't do what we actually do. And if you would like to support us financially, you can mail in a check to us, or you can do it uh, through the app or on the website, hopeforourtimes.com. Really appreciate all your support. We aren't supported by any church or any other organization at all. It's only through you guys, through our viewers. So I just want to thank you ahead of time. And we want you to know how much we really do appreciate you as we live in these last days and we are pressing toward the goal and doing everything that we can while we still have time, recognizing that our home is in heaven. Again, I just want to thank you guys so much and appreciate any of your support. All right, let's get back to this uh, because the walls are closing in and uh, we need to be aware of what's happening. So this past weekend, it was Sunday. What's the White House do? Well, the Biden administration issues a proclamation of Transgender Day, and it just happens to be on Easter. Listen, this is not a coincidence. It was intentional. It was intentional when they shut down churches a few years ago. It is intentional what they are doing now. And many churches just go along with this. But it wasn't just there. New York Governor Kokel uh, issues proclamation celebrating Transgender Day of Visibility. Check this out. 13 state landmarks were to be lit in celebration of Transgender Day of Visibility. Also, uh, guess what? On this past Easter Sunday. What were the landmarks? One World Trade Center, uh, the H. Carl McNall SUNY Building, State Education Building, Alfred E. Smith State Office Building, Empire State Plaza, and on down the list. Look at that. Just unbelievable. 13 state buildings lit like that. Friends, it's not an accident. Uh, think through this. America has been given over to a reprobate mind. I believe 
we are under God's judgment. With a reprobate mind or debased mind, as Romans chapter 1 teaches, what that means is a mind that's not just given over to perversions, but a mind that can't make a decision in its own best interest. Our leaders in this country have been given over to a mind that cannot make a decision in its own best interest. What we are doing against Israel, what we are doing against kids, what we are doing uh, internally to each other, and what the government is doing. I mean, really, with Transgender Day on Easter, we've been given over to a reprobate mind. Friends, I believe we are under God's judgment. It's already begun. With this, the hatred against believers and Jews is only going to increase. And I'll, I'll lay out six things, as I mentioned, that we need to do in the meantime. But first, work through this just a little bit more with me. Think, for example, about Canada. The 23-year-old son of Pastor Arthur Pulaski, uh, when addressing the European Parliament, said this past summer he pleaded for the international pressure in the case of his father because he was arrested after delivering a sermon to truckers blocking the border the previous year. And this is what he said. This is from this past summer. I am here today in desperation, a cry for help. I would like to stand here and tell you all the things about freedom and democracy that I like, but I no longer know those things. They have been taken away from us Canadians. Canada has fallen. He called Canadian Prime Minister Trudeau a modern-day Caligula, and he said, we cannot allow these mad emperors to run mad uh, they are claiming to protect us, but they are, quote, stripping our rights and ushering in tyranny. We read about the persecution increasing in places like India, uh, where there's organized Hindu violence against the Christian minority. It's become a government by mob and mob violence. We are watching what is going on currently in Haiti as it has descended into complete lawlessness. Australia is implementing digital ID. Everything is fast-tracking toward the system of the beast in which, if you choose Christ, you will be dead. If you choose the system, you'll be promised peace and safety, and you'll be able to have a rigged form of financial freedom. But the increase of hatred is continuing against both Jew and Christian. It is even worse in Africa, but this is what the Bible does teach us that as we draw closer and closer to the second coming of Christ, the two groups that will face increased persecution are the Jews in Israel and genuine Christian believers. I believe there's two different categories of those who call themselves Christians right now, the fake ones and the genuine ones. And God is sifting through uh, the wheat and the tares. What should we do? These are the six ways. Point number one, we should not be surprised. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22, Jesus said, you will be hated by all for my name's sake. So we should expect it. So number one, it should not surprise us. Beloved, Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 4, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. And number two, we should expect God to give us the endurance that is needed. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible reminds us that we are to be looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Number three, we must trust the sufficiency of his grace. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning in verse 9, the Bible says, And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, as Paul was writing, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities, wrote Paul, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Listen, Paul wasn't saying bring on the persecution, but what he was saying is, listen, when I am persecuted, when things go wrong, I know that Christ is on full display. He is the one that is going to strengthen me 
and it is going to be great. It is going to be glorious. So with that, when I am weak, then I know that I am strong and Christ is glorified. Number four, we should not seek the approval of man as a means of avoiding persecution, but seek first God's kingdom. I mean, you start looking at it, you look even at Christian leaders who, they want to avoid any kind of repercussions. They don't want to make people upset in their congregations. They don't want the media to say anything bad about them. So they do all that they can to avoid negative press, to avoid persecution. It shouldn't be that way with us at all. In Luke chapter 6, verse 26, Jesus said, Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Wow. Those are some strong words. Number five, just two more. Number five, we must know that the deepest fellowship with Christ in this world is the fellowship of his sufferings. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, the apostle Paul wrote, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5, he wrote, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. And number six, finally, we must see persecution as transitory and victory in Christ as eternal. Remember that. Persecution is transitory and victory in Christ as eternal. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 10, Jesus said, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. So what do the believers do in the coming tribulation period? Those who are left behind who come to Christ during the tribulation? Revelation chapter 12 tells us, they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and they do not love their lives unto death. Listen, hold your head up where it belongs. Jesus himself said, as we see these things begin to take place, look up and lift up your head because your redemption draws near. We are watching these things begin to take place, right? All these different signs are taking place. They're surrounding us. It's not a coincidence. So we do what Jesus said. Hold your head up where it belongs, looking to him, the author and finisher of our faith. We live as conquerors. Remember that. We live as conquerors. We are more than conquerors through him who has saved us, through him who has redeemed us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor any other created thing is able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Listen, don't be discouraged Rather, be encouraged and recognize, even as Paul wrote in Romans chapter 8, we are being conformed into the image of Christ, and we also know that our citizenship is in heaven. We are not of this world. So be encouraged. We're going to get through. We're going to get to the other side. The Lord's going to call us to heaven. In the meantime, we live for him, and we recognize if persecution increases, which, listen, if the rapture doesn't happen soon, these walls are closing in. What happened over Easter with the Biden administration uh, in New York and other places within our country celebrating Easter as Transgender Day wasn't an accident. It was done intentionally. That day was chosen for that purpose. Friends, lift up your head and know that Jesus told us, hey, this is what these days are going to look like. Jesus is coming. We're going to be called home. In the meantime, let's press forward. Let's move, let's move forward with him and for him and live as more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who died for us. God bless you guys.